Okay, ladies and gentlemen, please put your phones on silent as we're about to begin the podcast. A great cup of coffee. I just want to get a, can I get a nice Where's latte my coffee? in here? <laughs> exactly. I'm going to be here for four hours. Can I get a cup of coffee? <laughs> All right. All right. All right. What are we here to talk about today, Haley? Actually, 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 I like the way we started before. Hold on. Well, no, let's do it this way. All right. All right. Let's, let's get this podcast started. Yeah, yeah. Today, this episode is about the big girl Bible. I can't stop the accent. I'm sorry. Hold on. Let me stop. Today, <laughs> we're talking. <laughs> it's, in- it's infectious. Oh, no. Okay. All right. Actually, all right. I'll have you. It's like me when I start talking in a British accent. Can't oh, stop. Oh, God. I'm-, I'm trying not to pair it. I'm trying. Okay. All right, Haley. What is this episode about? You tell me. You're the you're in charge for this one. Oh yeah, because you're, you're doing it's, the it's your one. yeah. This is your Bible. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, <laughs> like fun topic. Yeah. All right. All right. Next, so t- next week's gonna be a little sad. <laughs> <laughs> get ready. Let's get ready. Ready. All right. So. Let's see. I like have my timeline picked up. Oh, all right. I did want to say, I know we're not going to do the highs and lows this week, even though if you guys liked the highs and lows that we did last week, let us know and we'll keep doing them because I do like sharing more of ourselves with you all. I do have something I wanted to say. We have officially 15 followers on Spotify. (gasps) <gasps> oh, wah, 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 wah. that's awesome yes wah, we wah, have wah, wah, wah. god you're so good at it okay hold on let me pull this up because <laughs> i had it saved so we have 15 followers on spotify we have 17 plays so i'm kind of like the two that didn't follow us where are you at and why aren't you following <laughs> us <laughs> um we are a delight and you should be following us <laughs> We have 67 followers on Instagram. Yay, yay. Yay, yay. We have... So, I think this is really funny. We have 67 followers on Instagram, but we have three on TikTok, and we're two of them. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. My friend, the self-care witch, um, who I absolutely love, um... They followed us on TikTok, and they're so amazing and active, and I love you so much. Uh, but where are you guys at on TikTok? Let us let us know why you're not following us there. Um, it might honestly be because Linktree won't put TikTok in the list. I keep why? like deleting it and redoing it, and it's something like I don't know. I have to try and do it like on the computer or something because I've. I've I've been following their directions and it won't populate the link on the list. That's weird. So that could be part of it. But okay. There's also what, like two TikToks? <laughs> there are I don't mean that as sass. Is there three? Four? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me see. There are four TikToks. Thank you very much. Ooh. <laughs> And then we have six subscribers on YouTube. No way. Yeah. That's so we're awesome. Low key slaying the game here. Um, <laughs> I'm proud of us. Getting to be a little popular. <laughs> and I, so I wanted to make sure I took a second and said thank you guys for being incredible yes. and following us and subscribing and just being so sweet and so kind to us i just i was so we were both so scared to start this podcast so scared to put ourselves out there and then hi do look at us go (laughs) yeah thank you guys so much 
warms my little heart. I was excited. We have 37 plays on Spotify, and we actually only need 100 to be able to monetize um, to where I can reach out to Pretty Litter and be like, sponsor us because I love your cat, little. Um, <laughs> we're your target audience, Pretty Litter. We're the people. We're the ones you want, and our followers are the ones you want. We um, use Pretty Litter for ourselves. Is what she's yeah. saying. That's what I'm saying. I literally have it right now in my house. That's my toilet is pretty litter, not my cat's toilet. <laughs> okay. I thought for a second you weren't getting my... No, I caught. I caught. In typical air sign fashion, I was like, okay, I got it. <laughs> I like the way it dries up my turds and there's no smell, no mess, no fuss. Anyway. This episode, anyway, God, okay, here we go. We're recentering. <laughs> we're remembering we're doing a podcast. Okay. All right. Today on the plus size section, we're going to be talking about the big girl Bible that we all have, even though you may call it something different, but as a fat body person, it's basically a set of rules and regulations that you, I think rules and regulations are the same thing. A set of like how don't do's and can do's, so self limitation, um, and also society limitations that we put on ourselves. And I used to joke all the time about like, oh, I can't do that because that's in the big girl Bible. An example would be. I like internally am not, I already know that if I go to someone's house and all they have are those plastic chairs, rule number 137 of the big girl Bible says, girl, you do not sit in that chair. You mean the lawn chairs? Not the lawn chairs. They're like those white. Okay. Let me, let me see if I can unlock a memory. The white plastic chairs with like three cutouts in the back yes those yes fuck those chairs those fucking chairs like because (laughs) remember this i got handed this bible when i was really young this this rule book by and that's another question i wanted to ask like and we'll get into it but it's basically rules that you live by that you can't do this because of your weight so I would go somewhere and if they had those chairs, I would be standing the entire time because I can't sit in those chairs. I'm a big girl, right? Like experience has shown that those are going to crack and it's going to be super embarrassing. Um, so that is what I call the big girl Bible. Um, and I was like, when I was doing this outline, I was kind of pondering like, did I create these set of rules or did my friends or family create them for me? Did society create them? Like, how did this even become like a thing? Mm -hmm. Um, And then like, why is it a thing? So what are some of your rules that you have? um, And how do you think they developed? Hmm. You know, Sorry, I just had to switch outlines. Um, <laughs> honestly, this big girl Bible, this was new to me. <laughs> so most of mine, honestly, were clothing related. And for most of those, I would definitely say they're from like society or like what not to wear. Like those kinds of shows from the 2000s that, of course, I was obsessed with because little Haley wanted nothing more than to be a fashion designer. Right. Yeah. I don't but, know why that's precious um, to me. Some some girl that grew up on a farm in West Virginia just wanted to move to the big city and be like Reese Witherspoon in Sweet Home Alabama. Oh my gosh. Or like movie. Like Pearl. Have you seen that horror movie where like she's on the farm and it's like a horror movie? She wants to be like an actress. Oh, it's totally not no. safe for work, but it's good. It's a good movie. Your childhood was a horror movie, Haley. 
It wasn't. I, but I thought that was funny. <laughs> I get that, though, because, like, clothing, like, I bought a black and white striped, horizontally striped shirt. Because my mom always told me that big people cannot wear that. It makes you look bigger. So mm-hmm. that was one of the rules of the big girl Bible. Like you can't wear those black and white striped shirts, but that rule was put in there by my mom. Like that's just part I have of that the rule, rule as well. Do you? No stripes. Yeah. I wrote no vertical stripes, but I think I meant horizontal. Yeah. But hamburger. in my experience, horizontal stripes were always more flattering on me. Cause vertical really? stripes would be like, you know, like they would follow the contours of my body. And I didn't think that was flattering, but okay. I, okay. So there's don't wear white or bright colors. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Don't wear tank tops because you don't want to show this shit, which that was one I never followed because I have always been a hot and sweaty person. And if I covered everything society didn't want to see, I would like die of heat stroke every summer. So yes, yes, just not possible. Yes, wear wear clothes that are a size too big to look like you've lost weight. It just looks sloppy. That's in your Bible. Mm-hmm. Always dress in a way that flatters your body, your body yes. type, instead of wearing what you like. Yep, that's in mine. Yep. These last four are not fashion related, but never sit in the middle seat anywhere. Anywhere. I feel like this is big girl Bible and also tall, tall girl Bible. Yes. Yes. Because like the middle seat in the back of a car, like my knees would be up here if I tried. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I Even as a short fat body person, I would never, I would actively avoid the middle seat. Sitting in general, mm-hmm. going to pick a seat in general as a big person is mortifying in every situation i i i I hate it we had to we took a lot of um transportation like buses in costa rica and like you had to Mm -hmm. pick your seat i i died every single time i always picked a single seat because god forbid i have to share a seat with somebody um and make them uncomfortable with my body so i think i still live by that even though i'm trying to like throw out my bible like i still live by that that's nuts it's still super ingrained absolutely absolutely i also (laughs) i had don't trust cheap beach chairs or those plastic lawn chairs those plastic motherfucking lawn chairs sent from satan himself there is a where where my office used to be pre-COVID there was a restaurant down the street that we would walk to for lunch that had like patio seating and this was a nice restaurant but they had those cheap plastic lawn chairs and I do not if any of my co-workers see this I do not mean this as shade but they always wanted to fucking sit outside and I wasn't at a point yet where I could be like I can't sit in those chairs right so I would sit in one and just like be engaged like like that would mm-hmm. hold me up if the chair broke but just like tense mm-hmm. the whole time right sweating trying to eat and look normal while praying oh. the chair holds me up I, oh just absolutely like... <laughs> there's a whole section in my bible on like eating etiquette as a fat person like mm. you know never ever eat as much as you're hungry like small portions always um for the longest time actually brian can attest to this i would not eat in front of him i think i went the first year or two years never consuming food in front of him and it was always like i i wouldn't eat with people i because i was ashamed that i even was hungry and i just wouldn't wouldn't eat in front of people like ever it was such a thing like even like in high school like this stems this is trauma um i during lunch period i was one of those people that i would literally go in the library and just like wait it out until it was over and then i would go home and i would eat when i got home um because i refused to eat in public forever like 
That's why, you know? and we're going to talk about like dismantling the Bible and taking active steps. Um, but it wasn't until this year, like through two months ago, I actually went out in public in my town and ate at, we have like a cafe here that everyone eats at and it has seating in the windows facing the street. And I went there by myself got food and ate in the window where people could see me eat. And I wanted to die the whole time, but I did it to prove that I wouldn't die if I did it. <laughs> so that's really huge that you could do well, that though. It was, it was a nightmare, but it was very healing. Um, so yeah. Anyways, what are the last items on yours? Sorry. So yeah, these two are about dating and they're going to get a little sad. But I need to let everyone know that I'm fine now. Okay. <laughs> um, hot people will never be attracted to you. Oh. That was reinforced by me getting no ass in high school. And mm -hmm. also every movie I ever saw. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But also, be okay with being someone's secret. Because that's all you're good for. No. That's what it said. Oh. I actually I did write the Bible, but I didn't write the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it first here. You heard it first here, folks. Haley is the actual author of the Bible. I am Jesus Christ herself. <laughs> Don't smite me. <laughs> just just in case you're real don't smite me please I'm just, kidding. <laughs> just in case you're real. no i do you think that those those two were society based or like you were they based on like experiences i would say based on experiences but society obviously wasted no time reinforcing those Right, right. And and we're going to have an episode talking about fat representation in the media. Um, mm -hmm. Because you're and I'm sure like right. a fat person dating episode too. Oh, ab oh, absolutely. Oh. Absolutely. Oh, oh yeah. We're going to, we're going to get into <laughs> that. Um, because yeah, I, I will say like from my own experiences, I have, um, been in relationships with some very attractive people but i said in an earlier episode about like being a moped um mm -hmm. where it's like we we didn't go out in public you know like past samantha was a mistress you know don't come for me i was young silly girl um mm -hmm. and it was like that was just normal to me of like being the secret so um yeah but they were I think they were fine. I mean, they were, yeah, they were conventionally attractive, I guess. Um, but no, those everyone, the everyone that I was involved with, I mean, they weren't unattractive. You know, when I say hot people, I mean like Abercrombie model. Oh, okay. Hot. Like just like just like a total Ken doll. Just a total Ken doll. You know, like, just unrealistically attractive. But I have not... Well, I can't say that. I have been I... with very few people that I was not attracted to. <laughs> like, I'm like, ugh, we're, if we're gonna go down this road of, like, I've, I've yeah. had some, I've had some hot ones, and I've had some... Oh. <laughs> That's how I would describe them. What just happened? Oh. That's oh, just what okay. that's how I would describe them. It's like, oh. Oh. Like, yeah, we're doing this. We're <laughs> happening. Um but you and I have no, a very different the... <laughs> We have very different experiences with dating. Um yeah. it seems you... like you've got more interest in high school or when you were oh. younger like i didn't really get any well, i mean i did lose my virginity in high school but like other than that there was no interest 
Oh, I mine was after high school. College. Oh, okay. Yeah, mine was when I was supposed to be in college. Like I in high school, yeah, right. Like I had this long term boyfriend for a while. Um and then it was like when I got in high school we broke up because I was I was toxic. Um I was one of those um chicks that were like, It's not you, it's me. Um, I'll admit it. Like wasn't Libras, the healthiest. Am I right? Libras have I <laughs> I'll admit it. Um, but I mean, he wasn't not toxic either. Anyways, uh, I dated him for, I I was like a serial monogamist up until after high school. So like I was in long-term relationships. Um, and then Mm -hmm. after high school, I was like, and we moved out of the state and we moved to this new town and I was like, just popping my pussy. Like I was just (laughs) <laughs> having a fun time you know with the local yeah. with the local guys it didn't help that my cousin had like me and him are really close and so like all his guy friends would come over and i had my own apartment and i was like oh my goodness you know <laughs> oh i know but you know i, I, rem- I used to i use- remember my first apartment <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yeah i used to definitely did not use men um but that wasn't in my bible like that wasn't one of my rules like it didn't say thou shall not use men if anything it said thou shall use men um and i that that's your family bible it's it's iconic that's that's the generational bible that we have here men are tools we use them (laughs) but i'm rewriting that we're we're getting healthier healthier and happier now so don't don't be mad, guys. It's fine. No one's getting used anymore. Um, Not unless they want to. <laughs> Not I mean. <laughs> yeah, I feel like my big girl Bible is very generational because my mom was, you know, I tend to forget this. She was a heavy woman for a really long time. Um, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Like, she was, she was definitely fat bodied. Um for a huge portion of my childhood. And then I remember her losing weight. I don't know what diet she went on. I just remember her saying like, I'm eating ice cream every night and losing weight. Um, I think that translates to, I am only eating ice cream once a day and not consuming anything else. Mm, um, yeah. I don't really know. I think prescription medication was also in the mix there. I'm not sure. I still have an Astra as an adult, but she went from being like, you know, over 300 pounds to like, I would say like 160 or something. Um, it was a yeah. major change. It took her like a year, but it was a major change. Um, yeah. And then, so she was larger. My sister was not larger until she got older. Um, Mm -hmm. which, you know, bless her heart. Um, cause it's hard. I think it's hard. Like I was fat early on. I grew up fat. I'm still fat. So I've only lived like the fat experience, but I think it's very, and you, we can talk about this from your point of view of like being, I, I, well, so my sister was thin bodied the majority of her life and then became fat body and i think that that shift is very traumatic for a lot of people because they see mm-hmm. like how fat body people are treated the um what am i trying to say the like hardships of being fat and i think it hits them like in the face you know of like holy shit like this is so much harder um so yeah. her and i can relate better now that she's fat bodied but i'm sure that was very difficult for her where i didn't really I was like always yeah. treated as a fat person, you know what I mean? Always had yeah. um those experiences. I mean, I was but... too. I was obviously similar to you. Mm-hmm. My um my mom grew up she grew up relatively thin. Like she was a a curvy woman, I would say, like just the way she tells it and I mean, she still has a a massive behind. Like just <laughs> No, I'm not even saying that to be mean. Like, my brother got her butt, and I am built like my dad. So. <laughs> Same. 
Same. Like, I think it's rude. It is rude. <laughs> but it's she rude. was like, she's small, like she's 5'3"-ish and was pretty petite until after she had kids. And so in her 30s, she gained quite a bit of weight. And I'm not sure how much. Honestly, I'd say at least 100 pounds, maybe more since then. But I could see how that would be very traumatic as well to kind of go through that change and like want to do something about it. But obviously diet culture and stuff being what it is, like it didn't work Mm -hmm. or, you know, it just kind of makes you feel worse about yourself. So like if I, if we talk about like how our families issues have affected us like I will I'm going to make sure to give my mom grace for that kind of stuff because I know a lot of it is coming from how she feels about herself Mm -hmm. same same I think that honestly my my sister was actually like crueler to me when she was thin bodied and when she became like fat bodied she it was like she could finally see life from my perspective and she became like honestly a better person and we have a better relationship now um i think my mom her and i are still working on our relationship um i kind of have this like general rule with her of like do not comment on my body do not comment what Mm -hmm. i put in my body um and that's kind of the only way that we can be healthy together um right. because even though like it's obviously coming from a place of love it's like still super triggering you know it's just in general oh, I know. and i'm sure you you know what i mean you know and mm-hmm. it's just like okay like that's the rule that needs to go in the big girl bible of like not commenting on what people are putting in their bodies not commenting mm-hmm. on their diets um instead what's in there is like you said like i had i was told of certain clothes to wear And it all came from a place of like, you know, I don't want you to get picked on. Um, I don't want you, I don't want people to see your body. Um, I, because kids are cruel, you know, people are cruel, Sammy. Like that's what I grew up hearing. Um, And then it was, you know, I can't really, it was like, so the majority of the rules are so limiting. And I think that's the point that I'm trying to get at with this episode of like, whatever rules you have, whatever you call them, whether you call it your big girl Bible, whether you, you know, you just have these internal dialogues of limitations, get rid of them. Mm -hmm. Get rid of them. Like, um, like I was talking about being on the transportation buses and being like, Oh, I can't sit with someone i have to sit by myself and that was like me limiting my experience in that moment of making a connection with someone else um because of my body Mm -hmm. and um you know having to cover up my body because of other people like i don't want to gross other people out and it's like well if they're gross they can look away it's it's 90 degrees out here like wear shorts you know wear a tank top it's it's hot (laughs) That has always been in the fashion part of my big girl Bible. That's always been number one. Like, do not, do not wear long pants and a hoodie in the dead of summer because you're afraid someone's going to look at your body. Like, it's just not worth being miserable. But I know a lot of people have, like, there are a lot of women that I know that have insecurities about their arms and I never necessarily dealt with that. So that one was easier for me to get over, Mm. but you know, it just, I, I sweated enough wearing as little clothing as I could. So (laughs) as little as I could get away with. I I'm one of those people I have my arm, like I, all throughout my childhood, like high middle school, high school, like I was the girl in jeans and a black jacket and because i hate my arms i'm like forcing myself to post them more because i know the hate is internalized fat phobia um Mm -hmm. and i'm like actively trying to undo that from myself from my psyche and my body an arm is just an arm you know what i mean Mm -hmm. but to me it's like I have to categorize it as like disgusting and gross and disfigured. And it's like, it's just a fucking arm. 
Yeah. It's just it an is. arm. It's just an arm. But I find myself, like, you know, like, trying to hide them. Like, even now, like, the parts of my arm that I like, I have specific clothing that I wear because it accentuates the part of me that I like and it hides the part of me that I don't. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm trying to, like, undo that and take pictures with my arms and show my arms more and just, like, kind of walk the talk. You know, like, I don't want to tell someone, I don't want to tell a client or any of our listeners, like, hey, you know, like, the first step is to, to be active in your, un, you know, your deconditioning and, you know, take steps towards radical self-acceptance. And it's like, but I'm also going to cover my arms. It's like, no, what are you talking about? No. So that's something that I've been. Oh, yeah. It takes time. Well, you inspire me all the time, not so much with your arms because, like, they look thin body to me, but your belly. You have always been someone that you have a B belly, but you wear jeans mm-hmm. and you'll wear, like, a top and you wear your pants. And it's never, like, I don't wear jeans because of my B belly. I'll wear, like, dresses and skirts and, you know, different types of pants that, like, cover my B belly, but, like, you literally posted a TikTok of you like trying on like you were wearing jeans. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. it's just fucking jeans. Like Haley's just putting on jeans. Like it's literally a piece of clothing. And it it just inspired me to like, just put on a pair of fucking jeans. Like, you know, I literally bought (laughs) jeans because of you. I literally went to Torrid and I bought jeans and I'm going to wear them with a crop top and people are going to be able to see my bee belly because of you. yeah. Yeah. Because, like, <laughs> I wasn't prepared. I love I'm that. Saying, yeah. I'm Seeing so your glad. Little, you know, Transformation Tuesdays and you're trying on clothes and I'm like, pop off. I want to do that, too. Like, I want to wear That's, jeans and a cute shirt. It's absolutely because I've gotten so used to seeing my body from taking pictures of it just to document my journey. Like, before... Um, before COVID and uh, before weight loss surgery, all of that, I did wear a lot of like longer shirts, like to work one, because I really could only shop at Torrid and they have that, like that, I think it's called the Harper, like that one fucking shirt style. That's like dressy and it has like the little cut and then the pockets and they're Mm -hmm. all long. So of course I bought those in every color that I could because I needed clothes for work. But a lot of it was also me just having to get over not being able to to hide my belly Mm. because I'm so tall and because my belly does hang low. As I got bigger, obviously, it hung lower and there was only so much I could do about it. So Mm -hmm. it went from me just tolerating it and being uncomfortable with it to me actively trying to get over it once crop tops like came in came in style because I really did like them Mm -hmm. and I wanted to dress that way and it's just kind of been it's been an evolution of of years of working on it at this point it's just yeah it's wild to think about like it is because I even when I went to Costa Rica like and I had that dress from Old Navy that I love Mm -hmm. because it's it has a cutout in near my tummy where my tattoo is and i love showing my tummy tattoo it's one of my favorite t- it it's, it's my favorite tattoo it, i mean it's, it's the number it's amazing um the artist is incredible and i love her and she like slayed the game with my tattoo my stern tattoo and so i want to wear shirts that show it and mm-hmm. um in one of the pictures like i didn't realize how tight the dress was because <laughs> like when you're looking at yourself like i don't know what it is like i i and like a professional photographer is photographing you and you're photographing you. They always look so it's like two different people. Um, Oh yeah. But when we got the those lenses photos, are different. There's like technical aspects of it for sure. Oh, okay. Like, oh, well, Sorry. that makes me feel better. Cause I'm just like, who is she? And these photos like, but you could see my B belly. You could see my lower belly. Um, mm-hmm. And I was like, and then I was like, I don't fucking care. Like I had a moment of like, nice. 
oh my god you could see my belly and then i was like fucking i have a belly like literally everyone has a belly mine just mm-hmm. happens to be have excess whatever fats is whatever the medical term for fat is i have extra of that in that area mm-hmm But I'm going to wear this dress because I feel so cute in it. And then I'm going to take photos in it. Like. Exactly. Exactly. There was this social media post. And I don't even remember where it was. It was years ago. It was one of those things like you just randomly see. And it's just like so thought provoking. It just permanently sticks with you. It was about hiding your belly. And. It was basically like, you're not fooling anyone with that long shirt. Like, anyone who is interested in you, like, romantically, they know that you're fat. They know it. The clothes don't really matter. Like, don't go to great lengths to conceal parts of your body because you don't like them in an effort to, like fool people or fool yourself and i was just like damn damn everybody knows that i have a big old belly underneath this tunic from torrid (laughs) right i mean it was just like formative (laughs) right yeah that's so true i think that that's well like part of the like rules the you know it has like its own little the bible has its own little intimacy intimacy section um so like for a while there it was always like (laughs) I was always like a lights off girly Uh and Brian and I have been married for seven years I ain't ever seen a light off in my life Uh ever ever that's a light on glasses on situation for that guy he is he's signing up he wants the 3D IMAX (laughs) glasses he (laughs) wants to catch you in 4K he does and it made, and like, because that saying is like so right. Like, I've always felt like, oh, like lights off, like you know, type, you know. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. Like, it was just like, I guess like movies. Like that. I feel like that's a society one because they always like oh, yeah. have the lights off or like they're drinking and their inhibitions are it down. Feels and, like yeah, like romantic, right? Also, yeah. Where it's it, in real life, it's like a Thursday. At like 12 p.m. And the lights are on. You know? And it's just like... Hey. You know what I mean? You're like, hi. (laughs) It's nothing like... Stop. You know? Full... There's there's no... You know what I mean? The fuck? It's mid-afternoon. It's like early afternoon, bro. Like, there's no lights off. You know? And there's no hiding your body. There, You know what I mean? Like... Ain't no covers. Mm-hmm. It's Joe just hot outside. Like, take none of that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, none of that. So that yeah. rule got thrown out with my current partner. Um, he would be so that's pissed. That's like, that's marriage. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, can we have the lights off? I want to hide my body. He'd be like, for what? Like, no. But that, you I, know, it would just never. Yeah. I, I prefer lights off but it's not it is not to necessarily hide myself so much as it is that I don't want to be staring into a big bright light (laughs) I used to be a little insecure but like we this this podcast is getting sexual (laughs) not safe for work this conversation is not safe for work everybody (laughs) no my uh my husband and I, we tend to get a little zesty with it in the afternoon most of the time. Zesty. And our room is kind of dark because of the curtains. So the light is off, but we can still see. So it's like mm. the best of both worlds. Right. But I did read something a couple of days ago, actually, about like neurodivergent people and intimacy and turning the lights off can help with like sensory, like enhancing sensory stuff. And you don't get as distracted. Mm-hmm. And I was like, huh, that's interesting. I know yeah. that Brian is going to want studio lighting for you at all times. But oh, at all times. All it's still times. good to know. <laughs> yeah. Ours is if you're, I mean, we've been together for so long, though. Like, we have that, mm-hmm. like, deep connection. Like, so, oh, yeah. you know, it, it's very different. Like, sometimes it's, like, yeehaw, and other times it's, like, look at me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Look at my soul. And you're just, like. 
Yeah, <laughs> you know? that's you know that is the wild thing. That is the wild thing about marriage for sure. It is absolutely <laughs> like that. Like sometimes you're just like, so do you want to have sex or what? And other times it's like, I love you so much. Like yes. give me your face. Yes. <laughs> if my mother in law yes. is listening, hi. <laughs> hi. God, if my sister like. And then we're listening. Hi, turn off. You should have turned this off like 10 minutes ago. I'm so sorry. God, I'm yeah. going to get a phone call on her being like, so you called me fat on your podcast. I'm like, mm, I didn't Did know you, you hear didn't the rest know. Of the podcast? Because right, it's like, not happening. <laughs> I was, I said you were an amazing person like 10 seconds after. Like, I know that you became a better person. Like, I thought it was cool. Um, I weirdly had like, physical restrictions on my bible so like Mm, i remember saying like i used to work in this it company i know it's like random stuff but like it just goes to like the self limitations because i had um there we had like a shipping dock like where trucks would come in like shipments would come in and those docks are like anyways um we had those just like (laughs) (laughs) we had those like shipping dock things and like the boys would jump off of them all the time like mm, because it's absolutely, it, it, you, not. absolutely not big girl bible like rule number one like thou shall not jump on or off of anything for thy is heavy mm-hmm. to I'm the not point to break where an ankle i'm not trying to break an ankle i'm not trying to break it and it's like okay but because of that rule when i went yeah, God, I feel like I'm talking about Costa Rica a lot. But the Costa Rica was a big trip for me, guys. All right. So when I went, everybody was jumping off this, like, ledge into the water. Mm, okay. And I was like, at first I was like, absolutely not. But then I was like, okay. <sighs> Do it. So I did it. And I didn't die. Awesome. And it was so much fun. Um, I did rip my tits, though. So, did I tell you this? No. Haley, I ripped my titties. What does that mean? Like your so, shirt or your titty meat? No, my titty meat. I ripped underneath my titty meat because I jumped in and I didn't like, I jumped in like this and I didn't like oh, cups no. my breath. I didn't like form the correct jumping stance. So my fucking tits hit the water so hard and the rest of my body went under quicker than my breasts went under so it like ripped my tits well, it that's was a, a new fear it, it, it should be because it hurt like a son of a bitch but i okay but i did it I... <laughs> it was a nightmare but i'm glad i did it i want to encourage other people to do it you know like within safety don't limit yourself because of your body. If your body mm-hmm. is able to do an activity safely, but you're not doing it because you have a fear of holding yourself back because of your because you're fat, not because of other reasons, then I encourage right. you to remove the fat thought process and just do it. Like we walked to, we hiked to a waterfall. We hiked. It was like right, right there, right. But it was really scary because like, it, there was like the rocks were really mossy and I had a stupid heavy mm-hmm. backpack because I'm an overpacker. So like I'm flailing and falling and getting overstimulated and I'm self isolating because I'm fat. So I'm like, Oh, nobody else is struggling. Only I'm struggling. But when I took myself out of my fat perspective, I could actually hear other people being like, Oh shit. And Oh fuck. Like it didn't matter. Yeah. Like, was I having a harder time because of my extra weight? Yes, I was. Did I give myself the same experience as thin-bodied people? Yes, I did. Because... That's what it's all about. Yes. And if I hadn't, if I had kept following the rules of my big girl Bible, I wouldn't have been able to give myself those experiences. So that's what we're going to talk about is to kind of go towards the end of the episode is like throw out your Bible people, throw out the big girl Bibles because big boy Bibles, big they, them Bibles, throw out the rules that you have for yourself because you're big. 
Absolutely. You are you already have enough you already have enough people rooting against you because you're a fat bodied person. Stop rooting against yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You have to choose you. You have to choose you. Like wear the bikini to the beach. Wear the crop top. Wear mm-hmm. the damn stripes. Wear the tank jump top. In the water. That, jump in the but water. Hold your titties. And oh, clench your butthole. <laughs> all of your, all of your titties and clench your butthole. Hold your That's titties. the part about jumping into bodies of water that scares me is the is the butthole part. Do you know about that? Yes, that I what me. I saw a TikToker. Like I saw like she like came up on my FYP, like that mm-hmm. she was like in the hospital because of her ass. Um yep. But I clenched that bad boy tight. It was my tits that I should have held on to. Take full body photos. I would have thought about that. Yes. Yeah. Take full. Don't be. Don't make. Okay. Don't wait until your before and after photo. Because I know that that's what a lot of fat body people do. I've done it. Mm -hmm. Every. Like I feel like so many people do it. Yep. Like Moira Rose says. Take a thousand photos of your body. Right now. And post them. Post Mm -hmm. your body. Who cares what they have to say? Whatever fears you have that you are limiting yourself right now because of your weight, I want to encourage you to take the active steps in undoing them. If you have your account on private right now because you're fat and you're scared of the trolls, I want you to make your account public, follow us, message us, tell us that you made your account public, and I will follow you. <laughs> That way you have someone in your corner. Yes, we will support you and we will be there for you as you do that. If you're scared to go out and eat by yourself like I was, do it. And take videos of yourself and pictures of yourself. Do a FaceTime Mm -hmm. with a friend, whatever. Like you're not going to get over these fears. Take a right. Yeah. Right. Give yourself the gift of experiences and taking up space that thin body automatic thin bodied people automatically do. Mm-hmm. They automatically do it. They assume like yes, I'm not saying that thin bodied people don't have anxiety, they don't have fears and their own internal dialogue. I'm not saying that. I'm not robbing you of that thin bodied people. What I am saying is fat bodied people need to start taking up space and having experiences in the same spaces that thin bodied people do. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was on my trip, there was beautiful, beautiful thin bodied people taking a million amazing photos of themselves under a waterfall. I didn't, I almost didn't take photos and I almost didn't have someone take photos of me solely because I was fat. That was it. That was the only reason I was with them. I was having the same experience as them, but I was robbing myself of remembering that experience because I was fat Mm -hmm. and I thought, well, they don't want to take photos of me. Girl, ask them to take a photo of you at a waterfall that you're never going to see again. So that's it. That's, that's (laughs) really like, that's, I, I like, I honestly don't have anything else to say because it's like. These rules are given to us by our friends, by our families, by ourselves, by society, like, and they're just there to limit your experiences and your existence. You already have limited opportunities. You already are going to have discrimination. You're already going to have hardship as a fat body person. Like, give yourself what you can and don't allow that to that programming to stop you from having the best experiences that you do have control over giving yourself, you know? Yeah. It's yeah. just like any other form of discrimination or bigotry. Like these rules are there. Um, oh, well, I will make one caveat. Fuck those plastic lawn chairs. They should just get rid of them. I will die on that hill. They're cheap. They're uncomfortable. They make you sweat in the summer, but otherwise the rules about what to wear, what to do, what not to do, whether to have pictures taken of you, 
Yes. They're all to make you more palatable to the outside world. It's not about what's actually best for you. And as someone who was an undiagnosed neurodivergent for way too long, this is like masking. Mm -hmm. Living your life to be palatable, palatable to other people is like masking. And masking is really fucking bad for your health. Go look it up if you don't believe me. Yes. Yes. Fuck so, those chairs. <laughs> fuck those chairs. Throw out your Bibles. Unmask your life. And follow us on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Spotify, and Apple Music, Audible, Apple Music, Audible. Facebook, I if you're old like us. <laughs> If you're old like us, Facebook. I saw that you did, like, you signed up for something that sent it all out to the other platforms. Did you do that? No. You okay, have. well. <laughs> follow up to see yeah. if we figure this one out, folks. We'll see you next time. <laughs> this has been the plus size section. I am Sam Rose Realness. And I'm unapologetically Haley. Y'all have a good night. <laughs> See you next week. Bye.